What up, sickos? I am super stoked right now to welcome one of the best in the world, I think, Jay Ferguson to the show. So let's do this. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What up, player? What's up? <laughs> hey, man, I'm so happy you decided to come. I, I know you're super busy, but uh, this is real special for me. Uh, I'm not trying to, that's one of my favorite covers, by the way, over there. Uh, oh, I like yeah, I love that picture where you do. You have like the inks and stuff next to it, like it's yeah. spills or something. So, if you guys don't know, Jay Ferguson is an incredible artist. Uh, recently, he did a Department of Truth cover that is unbelievable, and I want it. That's the cost of the interview. I get the piece. He told me. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> And uh, you were t I'm just so happy you're here. I know it took a while to get you here. You were super busy. And I know you said you told me you don't really do interviews. And uh, I just, it means a lot that you decided to come on. I know I kept asking you. I'm sure that bothered you. No, no, not at all. Like I, I told you before, I'm just, I'm not a big fan of talking about myself. Okay. Well, you could talk about me and I'll talk about you. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> so, uh, you guys have probably seen him in the chat. He's he watches the show, which every time I see his name pop up, I get all like a little schoolgirl, like, oh my god. But uh, you know, of course, he doesn't like talking about himself. But look, you're with one of the best, dude. I don't care what you personally think about yourself. I, I know artists have a lot of hard time with that, like, you know, oh, I, this isn't good enough or whatever. Oh, but yeah. man, <laughs> your your stuff is amazing, and I love watching you on Instagram. All his stuff is there underneath the little pictures of his stuff. You can follow him on Instagram and Facebook. Those are all his links. Yeah, I'm a super fanboy. Kim said it straight up. Um, and I know a lot of my subs are some of your biggest fans. For instance, Craig69. You guys remind me of each other in a certain way. Uh, if, I, if I were here, I'd give you praise. on <laughs> The fantastic red, rendering of Lady and the Red Queen. Thank uh, you. Oh, you just saw it. It just passed by. Um, I love how liquidy it looks, how realistic it looks. You're one of the most realistic artists out there. And um, I love, I, I want to talk about how you do it because you're doing a lot of airbrush, but you're mixing a bunch of different things together, right? How, how, how is yeah, that uh, putting all that together? Well, depending on the piece, like for the most part, it's like 99% airbrush, but mm. then like there, there is a shitload of, uh, pencils, like brushwork that goes into that. Like, but basically it, it's like all airbrush for the most part, but then super fine details and some shading I do in pencils. There's a lot of like erasing techniques because all, all the covers you see, they're all painted on paper. And then there is traditional like brushwork in there too. But for the most part, it's airbrush. I, I just, it's amazing to me because I've seen, you know, the other airbrushers that I know are Monty Moore. Um, I've never seen, though, with him, like his stuff's really, really nice, but how you get the so realistic. Like, I just, it's so realistic, man. Yeah. I, I, well, that that's more like for me. Even as a kid, I was always drawing portraits of people like that. That's just kind of like my thing. It always has been is doing portraits. Like even when I first started out airbrushing, like way back when I was, you know, in teenager, early 20s. Like I, I started out painting T-shirts and I was that guy at the mall painting T-shirts and leather <laughs> jackets. We all love that guy, dude. <laughs> yeah, I, I was that dude. That like guy. When I first when I was a kid in high school, that was me. But. All I did was, like, not all I did, but for the most part, it was all just portrait work. Like, for me to do a cartoon now, especially back then, but even still now, something cartoony, 
I struggle. Like I have the hardest time. I can't do it. To me, that's hard. But a portrait to me is is very like nat. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's just very natural for me to do. Yeah, everyone's got their everyone's got their style. Uh, you know, or w something that makes. For instance, Michael McCombs in here, his style is completely different. You know, I was showing. I, I'm sure you know. I was showing his. You know. Yeah, I've seen his stuff. I actually yeah, I just yeah. started watching him on Twitch. That dude's hilarious, man. Yeah, I watch him too. <laughs> Pretty fun, man. Uh, but um you're in the you're in the category of more realistic, and there's only a couple up there with you, like I think that can hang, you know, like Perio, um, Oliver, Piper's on her way up. I know you like her a lot. Um, oh, yeah. um only a couple, but your stuff, your stuff dabbles in the dark. I mean, you love the dark. Yeah. And so what's up with that? Like, well, that, that that's always opinion. Like you, you just love like horror. That's always been my thing. Like it, everything I've ever painted has always been like real kind of badass evil looking. Um, like for me being in comics, uh, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't look for comics. Comics found me. Like I, I've never gone out of my way to do a cover. Like I, I, I was approached. I never went to any company looking to get into comics. It, it just kind of showed up at my doorstep. Because what were you doing before? Like what exactly between yeah. the so between the shopping mall and now? Well, like, I mean, <laughs> the shopping mall. I mean, that was a very, very long time ago. I spent many many years doing like custom bikes just murals on on motorcycles and then i got out of that a long time ago and i i just been doing gallery work like i do gallery shows and i work for like tattoo companies and, and whatnot and then it was actually kevin fields from frankie's comics mm -hmm. he just messaged me out of the blue one day and he's like dude i want you to do a vampirella I thought about it I was like yeah okay i'll do it and then as soon as i did that I, it just kind of like blew up for comic work for me i think it's really interesting like you know, i'm not trying to bring up lucio in any way but I, when i talked to him i said you know your your stuff should be like because he's in italy you, you know your stuff should be like in the walls of museums and you know you know like like old churches like he resembles that style right oh like yeah that old gothic he has this very similar gothic a little you know and he's like I always want to do comics that's all he wanted to do was comics yeah. And like it I just I think it's amazing to me because everyone's different, right? And like you just came upon it and now like is it your it's your main gig or what? Like pretty no, much it, it, I'd say half half. Like uh, I've I've built a pretty loyal fan base and collector base throughout the years just doing like my own private work. So mm -hmm. that it, it's like a balance, half half right now is there any stuff that you have that's not dark i'd be interested to see what that was like well, uh, <laughs> nothing i've painted in like the last <laughs> 10 years uh, no i don't well that's good i mean that it separates you man for sure uh i just your your paintings bring out not only the darkness right but in the realistic but emotions everything's yeah. emotion uh, to everything i've seen like look right there she was like orgasmic you know and then this one she's like well you know kind of what's going on you know like uh, who yeah, knows? That, that's kind of that's my thing like that's what i i personally really strive to do with all the portraits all the paintings i do is to not only just have a portrait but to really kind of set a tone with the work like i want everything to kind of have like this not everything but for the most Life. part have life, but I really want it to most of my work to to have like a sad feel to it. Like I want you to be able to look at it and be like, "Wow, like this girl's having a bad day" or something like that. You know? Yeah. At, at the same time, she's super hot. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, I'm always just trying to to pick beautiful, like just beautiful, dark, sad kind of vibe to my paintings. Well, you definitely nail it. Um, so that last, do you still have the, well, I don't want you to get up, but the, um, 
dude, the last department, I mean, I, I'm, I've loved all your <laughs> stuff, right? I don't you know, I had a gut feeling you were going to ask about it, so it's yeah. right to you. I want them to see it up like the original, you know what I mean? I'm just going to hit the light so you can see it better. Oh, dude. It's unbelievable. On Instagram, you can really see like more liquidy, like, yeah. oh, God damn, dude. <laughs> it, it's a, is it like a mashup between like a Jackie and Marilyn type of thing? Uh, no, it, that wasn't my intention. It, you know, I just, in my head, that's kind of how I, I picture her looking. Yeah. Like, like it wasn't, head, that's how she better look. That's like, it, it does, like I can see why you'd say that. Like it does kind of have like a little bit like of a Maryland look to it, but that certainly wasn't the, uh, that wasn't like the intention of going into it. Yeah. Like the pose type of maybe thing. I don't know. Um, Dude, it's absolutely amazing. I'm sure whoever you did it for, you can plug them if you want. Uh, I was very happy. Oh, that's for uh, Heat Seeker. It's part of the set because it was uh, that Department of Truth and because uh, that's number 12 and Ice Cream Man 25. It's a set. Uh, like I did an overlay on top of them of a, a, a king and a queen, like a card set. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen the King one flip by through the your pictures. And there's a lot of stuff that you guys won't be able to see because of major boobage. Uh, we're trying to make sure that more people see this video <laughs> than it get blocked, which is ridiculous. Uh, but um, someone was asking me to do a House of Slaughter exclusive with you. Well, I just want you to know, I reached out to them, and they, they're at their cap limit already. They've been at their cap limit for exclusives. I have a feeling you might be doing one anyway. Uh, not, not, not to my knowledge, you know. <laughs> well, I, I was like, let me see if I can get it, and if I can, I'll call Jay. And, uh, of course, they told me no, so that sucked. But I have plans, and we'll get there, guys, eventually. I have some secret plans. Uh, not many people know. Jay's got a little – he heard a little bit of it. Ash Maddie's in here. Little inkling. Yeah, Ash says, "Wow, I love your work, Jay. I don't know if you've ever seen Ash Maddie stuff before." Yes, I have. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I what I love about look, I can have the worst day. I've had the worst couple of days. I haven't had any sleep, right? But what right. I love about what I'm doing, why I'm live, is of course my subscribers, but you guys. I've got I've got Ash Maddie in here. I've got Mike McComb in here. You you know you come in here. Piper comes in here. Artists, when they're part of this channel with my subscribers, it it just it fills the whole of my soul. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's the best thing about my channel for me is you guys. So I just want to say thanks so much for coming and and watching and subscribing and and all the people, especially you guys too. I want to expose you guys to everyone. I want people to have like that. Like this show is called Mini Con or whatever. I changed the name and moved stuff around, but like that Mini Con experience that they wouldn't be able to get. Like, you know, even at a con, if you're doing a piece, you can talk to someone for so long and then you got to get to the next person. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you're, are you in Canada? Yeah, I'm in uh, Hamilton, Ontario, for those that know it. How, uh, how big is the meatball sub down there? Or is it more of a Canadian ha bacon thing? <laughs> well, I mean, the, I'm assuming it, the, our, our subs are the same size as your guys. but I think ours are a little bigger. Yeah, according to Joel, <laughs> you, he has the best sub in the world. So. I know. I, I got him one. He was very happy one day. Um, so what is your plans, man? I mean, have you been – okay, so – would you do a Marvel DC? Have you done a Marvel DC? Um, I was, I've been offered a couple of titles and I've said no. Was it? Can you tell us which was it, Marvel or DC? Can you say that? It, it was Marvel. Okay. Would you rather do DC? I'm, I, I get kind of torn with that. Um, I've always, I feel like your style fits more of the 
DC darkness that they... Yeah, I mean, for the overall tone, I, you know, the better fit probably would be a DC title. My only struggle with that is when you're... For me, and it, it's a silly thing, but, you know, maybe other artists might be able to understand it when I say it. I, I really struggle with uh, doing work for a company that big. Yeah. Just for the fact I don't want to appear as some kind of a sellout in my work. Mm -hmm. Doing that. Like, I don't mind doing like smaller kind of independent titles. I'm actually, I'm, I'm all for it. But when it comes to the big stuff, it's not that I would say no. I have said no. And it's not that I wouldn't do it down the road. But if it was like a really good fit and something I thought I, I kind of had to do, I, I would do it probably. But I understand what you're saying about selling out and like that, that feeling at least. Um, yeah. You know, like I, I've always like, I, I do my thing. It's kind of like, you know, when Metallica came out with the black album and they just sucked overnight, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be Metallica. Yeah, I get it. I mean, so <laughs> dude, I, I want to see you on a lady death really bad, man. Like, I just, <laughs> It's killing me. I don't know why it hasn't happened yet, uh, but we'll see. It's I know it'll happen. I, it seems like the most perfect fit, like for at least a cover. So you just blast off one good Lady Death cover, and just be like, "Yeah, I just put my mark." Like, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'd be all for it, you know. So, um, I don't know. I want to peer into your mind more. But I'm, <laughs> my own mind's all messed up. Dig right in. Ask away. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's take a couple. Let's do this. Let's see what the chat might have to say here. Do you guys have any? Oh, yeah. Eddie says, why the hell isn't aren't you on Spawn? That's a tough gig to get on. Well, Spawn doesn't do variants, first off. Yeah. So to, to be on the main cover... Uh, Again, that that'd be a if that opportunity was ever presented to me, I, I something I probably I'd think about it at least. I I, I don't know if I'd definitely say yes because again, like for for me, a book like Spawn, like that's a super huge, super big book, and it, it because I know it's weird. Probably everybody watching this right now is like, "What the hell's wrong with this guy?" But to work on a title that big for me, it. I don't know. I, I, I really struggle with, with doing stuff like that. I think I think eventually something will change. I feel like if you did spawn right, then you're like an ongoing, you're doing covers constantly. Like for spawn, you know, like you said, there aren't variant rate, you know, exclusive. So if you were on, you would be like for a whole year. You know what I mean? Like Yeah, I mean, like it'd be a hell of a commitment. And that's yeah. something that I, I don't take that lightly. And again, it's not me saying I wouldn't do it, but I'd really have to think about it. Yeah, because that's a that is a big commitment. Uh, Joel asks about besides meatballs, uh, what do you use for reference? Do you hire models? Uh, I have a, a whole slew of things. Like uh, I do have models that I can use. I, you know, lot, lots of friends, fans, models that'll help me out. Uh, I, I, I do have I like a. That several file folders of just references of poses. If I see a pose that I really like, I always just kind of, I'll save it just to throw it in the, the reference library so I can. Like this pose right here, what book were you looking at when you did that? Uh, that was probably Pornhub. <laughs> That's where all the best stuff comes from. Uh, did you, I heard you uh, talk to Amazon cosplayers. She told you she was very excited about that. She heard some. I heard yeah, that. yeah, actually, uh, she did some modeling for me. You lucky bastard. Uh, Choncho, what's up, Choncho Holmes? Did you study art at any point, or are you completely self-taught? Um, I failed art in high school. Wow. Uh, I did go to art school for, I don't know, I think, two months and I quit because I couldn't couldn't stand it did nothing for me I'm I'm basically self-taught yeah. that's really amazing honestly because 
I hear a lot of people saying that they're constantly learning they're doing school and all that. And almost every artist has told me that. Like, it's just constantly. I know you can learn from your own mistakes, you know, but they were more talking about like learning from others, others, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, that's really me. I could see were you doing this type of portrait stuff at those times. Yeah, school? I mean, not not to the level that I am now, but basically, everything I do now is the same thing I was doing twenty seven years ago. Like it hasn't. The style hasn't changed at all. Um, I, I've just gotten better at it. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm totally self-taught, and for the most part, like like honest to God, like uh, I jumped in when I was 22 years old. I was driving a forklift at a warehouse, loading trucks all day. That's what I did, and I was just airbrushing at flea markets and whatnot on the weekend. And it got to the point where, like, I was making more money on the weekend than I was all week working at the warehouse. So I got the grand idea. It's like, okay, well, if I'm making this much money on the weekend, then I'll I'll go get like a retail spot at like a mall and I'll be painting t-shirts and leather jackets and full time. So I I quit my job, literally leased a store at the mall. And I did that for, uh, I don't know, two, two, three years. And during that time, that was probably like the best learning experience I ever had in my life. Cause li- like I just dove in head first. Like I didn't even think about it. It's like, fuck it. I'm going to do it. And I did it. And, and back then, like this is way before the days of the internet and Photoshop. Like we're talking 1990. What was this? Like 1995. Yeah. The, the time period. yeah so I mean, when I was doing a portrait, like literally dude would come up with his girlfriend and be like, yeah, you know what? Or his wife, or his mother be like, you know, I want a, a portrait of my mother. And I, I do work on canvases too. And I just sit there with a piece of charcoal and a canvas or a shirt or a leather jacket. And either the person was standing right in front of me, or I was working from a little dinky Polaroid this big, sketch it out in charcoal and just do it. Boom. And literally when you're doing that kind of work, you get paid by how fast you work. Like the more you do in a day, the more money you make. So yeah. I kind of try to limit myself to, I try to pop off a portrait in two, three hours tops. So, I mean, literally back then in 1995, like I was doing maybe five, six fully detailed color portraits in a day. Jesus. But by doing that, like I got really, I was able to teach myself to kind of get really fast, but still be really good. And, and yeah, that's so many different like models. And I mean, it's constantly something different every time. Yeah. And that, that, that to me really paid off in spades over the years. Like, cause like I say, for me, portraiture, it, I'm not going to call it easy, but it's very natural for me. Yeah. Well, you, you've got the gift. You've got a gift that you, it's nice to look. I have friend, I have a friend, a real good friend of mine. I grew up with, he's a, an incredible artist. Right. And I told him his whole life, dude, what are you doing? You're an artist. Like, yeah. you're incredible. No. And I love the guy. And if he watches this, I love you, bro. But he would rather work in a phone room for the last 25 years. Like, this guy could, you know, you you took the jump. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you stopped driving a forklift. You realized this is what you're good at. And, and you just went with it. And, you, you know, it's been, what, 20 years, 25 years since then? Or? 27 years now. 27 years, and now you're doing some of the best covers in the world, I think. Yeah, but that's not to say that, you know, for 25 years, that was the, the best decision I ever made, because being an artist, you, the money sucks. <laughs> well, I mean, look, at, look now, does it? Does it still suck? No, I mean, don't get me wrong. The money, it, I, it, I make a decent living, and I have been making a decent living for, for a while now, but I can see why anybody would be very apprehensive about being an artist full-time, because the money does suck. Like, I mean, even now in the, in the comic, oh, I understand doing this, the money's decent. Like if you were just doing comics and comics alone, the money's decent. If you're literally, if you're cranking this stuff out every day, it's a good living. If you're just doing it every now and then the money's not really very good at all. Plus you have to be known too. like, unless you have a gig, like you were at the mall yeah. doing your thing, right? Most artists nowadays, they all want to be found like, you know, like my friend Chin. He's a great artist. Finally, he got some covers. Now he's no known. He's doing covers everywhere. But it took 
a huge, you know, it takes forever, you know, like, unless you're like instantly a, a success, right? If you don't, oh, it does. It, it takes, yeah, it takes years. Like I, I was working for, for eons before, and, and it, like my level of, uh, success it, really it was weird it was like a one-year period you went from kind of being uh eh, we've heard of them to being like an, a big name like within the matter of a year and i'm not even trying to call myself a big name because that that's not how i think of myself at all well i understand that and i, I get i think that's with anybody you know like i i completely understand what you're saying especially from artists i hear that same thing all the time you know but that's good you know stay humble stay you know but you are one of the best like i can tell you straight up you have the best i mean dude it's so real i don't know i think i'm kind of biased though because my favorite type of art is like the realistic portrait style like you know yeah. and i can't like you know <laughs> i can't see once i saw it I can't go back. Like, there's certain things I yeah. like, but once you see the realistic, and you're like, God damn, that looks so real. You have to keep looking at it over and over. Like you, you don't just. This is great, great cover, right? Yeah. Like you know, or this. It's good, but I I'm not gonna pick it up ten times. Keep going back and looking over and over. God damn, seeing something else that I love, seeing the. the getting a feeling out of it that's what i think you know i don't know I, i'm kind of tired and blabbing all about a whole bunch of stupid shit but no, uh, really. i mean everybody's got their different styles like i mean there there's so many artists out there like i i absolutely <laughs> love like i go goo goo for their stuff and i like i work in my style and i struggle like hell to work in other styles and i try and sure. I, I'm I'm constantly trying to to change up the way I do things, but I kind of I fall into the trap of where I just kind of I revert back to doing the same thing that I do. It's very hard for me to get out of being super realistic. Like I'd love to really kind of deconstruct everything I'm doing and really loosen it up, but I I, I have a really hard time doing that. Well, that's the thing. Like, I mean, if you can, ex what do you? You're fighting yourself. Is what you're doing yeah. like if you get more time and i'm sure you have time but you're very i'm sure you're really busy right now too i know you are but like other people i've talked to said i just don't have time like you know i don't know how long it take you to do the department piece you did three days a week well usually painting time like a portrait like that two days i can i can put it out sometimes even a day the, the longest part for me is actually Coming up with a concept and just roughing it out, that's the hardest part. Like once I get that done, the actual painting time, a day, two days, max, done. Like, so but it I could take me three weeks to figure out what I want to do. Yeah. My I get head, it. You know, I'll sketch something out. I'm like like I, I just finished the cover for the new steak spin-off, Jessamy, is coming mm -hmm. out. And I don't know how many drafts I did for that because I do it. I'm like, I love it. I even gave it, I submitted it and they're like, yeah, cool. And then I messaged them back. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to totally redo the whole frigging thing because I'm just, <laughs> the more I look at it, I'm like, ah, eh, I'm going to change it. Sometimes you need, I mean, well, you got to be comfortable with what you do, but I always say it's always good to have someone that has a good eye for art to look at it and sometimes make the decision for you. And that's hard to do, I'm sure. But I, so many artists I know, well, just don't stop or they can't finish or they don't see certain things that you see as an outsider. You know, it's so weird. There's a weird mix. Yeah. Like for me, honestly, it, literally every piece that I do, when I start out, I'm kind of really into it. When I get halfway through it, I hate it and I actually want to rip it in half. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, I'm, 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 I'm not kidding. Like, and I mean, every fucking thing I paint is the same Why thing. Is that? Halfway through it, I'm like, I want to throw up. I'm like, I can't stand what I'm doing. But I've, I've learned, and I used to do that. I would literally, I'd rip it in half and be like, fuck this. And I'd start something new. But I'll force myself to finish it. Literally force myself. And I'm looking at it going, eh, I don't really like it. I'll, I'll photograph it, whatever, submit it, 
every, you know, they're all happy with it. They're overjoyed. And then it's usually about a week later, like I'll literally, I'll put it away. And then a week later, I'll look at it and I'll say, all right, like I, I kind of dig it. Yeah. But I, even to, like there's no piece I do, like that department of truth. Like I look at it and I think, yeah, could have done better. There's got, what? that's okay. I hear that a lot too. Everyone's all struggling with their piece. And then they all they could say they're doing better. And what I was kind of going towards was, in regard to your time limit, right? Like you do things in a couple of days, like yeah. do you wait? And, and, and it's natural for you to do it quick because you've, that's how you're taught yourself. Once you know, you go, yeah. but um, I, almost everyone I talk to that wants to advance in their career or like their end game. Right. And I don't know exactly what your end game is. We'll get there, but is like more time to like really put a lot of work in a piece where I guess you can go, okay, it's good. Like, you know, with me, that doesn't really work with me. And like, at any given moment, if I wanted to, like, I, I could paint like a, a six foot tall, six foot wide canvas. I could start one tomorrow if I wanted. I could work on it for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like, if I do it for myself, I have no deadline, but for whenever it's done. Mm -hmm. But with me, the, the one thing that I need to do is when I start something, I need to finish it. Like if I, if I walk, no, like if I walk away from it, it won't get done. Mm -hmm. Like it'll literally, it, it'll sit there forever, collect dust. It'll never get finished. Like once I start painting something, I do not stop until it's done. You're forcing yourself to not stop or is it an OCD? Cause I, well, it's, it's a complete OCD thing. Like literally. Yeah. When it's go time, it's like, okay, do it. And that's why I say, like, I'll, I'll paint it in a day. Like, I'll, I'll start at 8 in the morning, stop at midnight, done. Good to go. Like, yeah, I have the same thing, but, of course, I'm not artistic. But, mm. like, for instance, I, you know, I get, like, 100 orders, right? Like, you know, and I don't need to pack them all. But I won't stop until 7 in the morning until it's done. You know, I'll work 16 hours straight until it's done because – I have to be done or I won't move past it. Just like yeah. last night, I had my idea. It was the worst part. I had OCD all night packing and I get done and I lay down and I have a, to me, a muse idea, personal, personal idea. Right. And I told you about it and I couldn't get past it. Like I, I, I kept saying the word in my head over and over. It's just like, now I have to finish it or I'm going to go insane. I hate that. I need meds. Yeah, I'm totally the same way. I'm completely the same way. Do they have meds for that? What is? What do I need to take? Anxiety pill or some shit or what? I couldn't help you with some that. Beers or I need to get some Jack. Well, <laughs> it'll slow you down and fatten you up. <laughs> oh, I've already got the fat part. I need to slow down, bro. Um. Well, okay, you guys in the ch oh one last thing. Do you have an end game before we'll ask some people in the chat more and I could talk to you all day, but I don't want to keep you forever. Um, get your questions ready, guys. Is there an end game? Do you, is there a dream for you or are you living it? Like, is there an end game or what's your, like, what have your own gallery somewhere on the, on the beach or what? I mean, like what, what's, is there something there? Honestly, I don't, I don't really have like any kind of set goal in mind you know i always i always look at life as a journey you never know where you're going to end up and i don't try to set a de destination for myself um you know if i won the lottery tomorrow if i was a billionaire overnight i'd still paint every day i'd probably just give my shit away for free if that was the case but well i hope that I, happens yeah i mean like i i i don't really have any big end game in mind right at least right now i don't like i i'm just i'm just happy doing what i'm doing if i just get to paint what what i'm into painting then i'm happy like i really don't to me it doesn't matter if it's going to be on a comic cover you know on a camp if, if it's going to a gallery to a collector if it's going to be published for a book i don't really care where it's going as long as it's something i wanted to paint and i'm kind of happy with the outcome of it i don't really give a shit what it's for so I don't, for me to say, yeah, I want to have a gallery down the road. I don't really care. Like I, I'd be perfectly happy painting 
canvases on a street corner and handing them out to people as long as i like what i was painting it would make me i just like painting yeah well there, there's no doubt about that i can tell in the way you portray it like on instagram i you i almost who's take are you taking your own photographs yeah like yeah. where you're like airbrushing and you what do you press like a timer or something or do you are you filming yourself and you take the screen oh yeah I, I got a little uh yeah, no, I, I got my phone on a stand and I'll just, I'll, I'll hit the timer or a lot of times I'm streaming. Like I'll do a lot of live streams on Instagram. I so, haven't done too many lately, but I'll, I'll just take like a screenshot of like one of the live streams I do. So what I noticed about that though, is that you have an eye for not only what you're doing, but photography. I don't think you maybe maybe you realize that maybe you don't maybe you've been into photography i don't know but when i look at your instagram i've never post, been told that before <laughs> so well this is a personal view when i look at your instagram post and i see the certain like you'll do like for instance the hardly thin where you put down and you put all the paint with the brushes and shit and the paint yeah. was like dripping on the page that's gorgeous like no, you understand you. that right like that's a photograph that's like a that's art in its own. You're you're being artistic by laying it out there, putting the brushes, pouring a little. You're like being inventive and, and creative by I'm doing that. I'm just trying to make a cool picture. That's all. Well, that, okay. Well, for you to try and kind of, because you already got the talent. I'm over here looking for a piece of pizza and how to make my next buck. But like <laughs> you just, you know, I'm great in bed, but that doesn't help me here. So... <laughs> <laughs> but you know i'm just telling you you might have an eye you might have something else like maybe a side hustle i know that your thing is art and painting and that's your love of your life and you've realized it and you're capitalizing it and you're enjoying it but if you ever need to get away try photography that's my muse advice of the day okay so i think i think you're whatever i'm done licking your balls here you go let's see uh Okay. Are you doing any cons in the States? Um, I'd like to, but as of right now, I'm not allowed into your country. So that was another question that Eddie asked. Are you allowed in my country? Nope. Now, that's not, a, that's not because you're wanted. It's because of COVID, right? Yeah, drug trafficking. Oh, is it drug trafficking? Yeah. yeah. No, it's just because of COVID. Like, I can't. I think it's they're saying like September, like end of September, the border is going to open up. So it maybe I'll do a con, maybe I won't. Like I've been asked to do like MegaCon, I was asked to do it, but I have to say no because I I'm not going to say yeah, I'm going to be at a convention, but then I have to cancel it because I can't even get across the border. So <laughs> I, there's a lot of comments, so I'm trying to find. Uh... Okay, we got the con. Okay, this is an interesting question. I don't know if you do homages, but any homage covers coming up? Um, is that do you do homages? I I I would normally say no. Spencer, uh, Comic Kingdom of Canada. We had a discussion about doing he doing one, and I said I would do it. I don't know when it's going to happen, but there will be one down the road. Oh, and it's kind of cool because it's a an homage that I was like, yeah, I'd do that because I, yeah. Well, that's good. At least it's something that you want to do. Um, who in the industry are you looking forward to meet? Oh wow! Uh, oh shit! I, I, I'm not even going to try and be specific with names. I I don't want to name some people and not name others. I mean. Well, Pretty, I'm ask. I'm happy as shit to meet anybody, any artist. I'm more than happy to. I'd love to meet meet them all. I'm, I mean, it, it, one for sure. Like if I could ever meet Lucio in person, I'd I'd love to do that. I, I'd love to be able to just shake his hand and say hey. Uh, like I really 
look up to that guy or like Del Otto. I'd love to meet him. Uh, mm -hmm. Like Dan Quintana, I'd like I'd love to meet him. Uh, even Carla, I mean her work, holy shit! Like man, she has really improved. Well, she was always good. Yeah, she was always really good. But you know, you need like you said, you need that like in. And once you're in, you're in, and then it just explodes. Plus, she's living with you know <laughs> Lucio. So. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, there's so many artists, and I mean, a lot that I'm friends with that I've actually the kind of internet friends that I've never met in person, like, you know, like Shannon Mayer or John Jang or uh, David Sanchez, even uh, your friend there, Esteban. Like I, I, I chat with him quite a bit. Like I love his work. And I, I, again, that's another dude I'd love to meet in person if I was ever given the opportunity. You know? Yeah. I, it's interesting that, I mean, the people that you're saying are very, a lot of their styles are similar, more realistic um and dark too so it's kind of yeah. in your, not all of them but you know mayor kind of out of there i mean he can no but they there. they do all kind of have like kind of a dark tone and, and mm -hmm. again that's that's what i'm drawn to like any any art that i collect like it, i mean i can't really give you the tour of my place but most of the stuff on my walls not the stuff directly behind me but everywhere else i well i couldn't show you on youtube anyways you get your channel band but <laughs> it's all dark like the i i'm just drawn to it like yeah like i mean like a lot of artists that i collect that have nothing to do with the comic book industry like david stupakis or uh kevin llewellyn uh christopher lavelle sean Coss, like all very very dark like those are guys i would love to see do a comic cover mm -hmm. and i've said that to a couple of retailers like when I've been too busy to take a job, I'm like, hey, you know what? You should really give this guy a message and see if he'd do something for you because you'd flip out if they did a cover for you. Do you have do you have your do you do you have a favorite piece of your own? Like I I know you that done I've done. It. Yeah. Um no, not really. I, I don't have anything that sticks out that I, I'd pick as a favorite. You're too tough. <laughs> You're too do you do you prefer to draw boobage or ass? Uh, I'm good with both, really. Do you like EM Geist? Do I like who? EM Geist. Um, that name doesn't ring a bell to me. I, so. I think I know it, but let me just look it up anyway. He could be messing with you. I don't. I don't see anything. Oh, is he the guy that does the aliens? Does he might be the geest? What? Geiger. Geiger. I'm looking here and I see Geist as well. I don't know, but yeah, you're right. It is Geiger or whatever Geiger. Um. <clears throat> Well, man, I don't really know what to, else to ask you. I mean, I could sit here all day, but most of the stuff I want to talk to you about secrets, so they can't hear. And, uh, <laughs> True. <laughs> and most of the stuff you could show us is either you can't show or boobage. You guys got a pretty good amount of really good stuff. That looks like what's his name? I know it's what's the singer. Oh no, that that's Valak the nun. But it does look like him, kind of. Do you know what I'm talking about? I have no idea who you're talking about. The rock singer that paints his face and he has the one eye. Marilyn Manson? Yes, dude. It has a Marilyn Manson. He got a little Marilyn in there, dude. Well, he looks like a chick, so. <laughs> and that Wonder Woman came out of nowhere. Who was that for? Personal? Uh, that was a commission. Yeah. The, Eddie, he doesn't have any Marvel or DC commissions. He hasn't done anything with them yet. Right? Plus, even if you did, you well, I mean, I, I've, I've done characters like as private commissions, and I've just oh. never got the cover. Yeah. You ever done like a Venom? Uh, yeah, I have done a Venom. I've done a Venom. I've done a couple Catwomans. Done a Joker. Uh, done a Batman a while ago. Yeah, I, I've got quite a few 
characters that I've just done as commissions for people. Yeah, I, I'd be interested. I mean, I'm more, of course, inclined to want to see your like Catwoman's or that dark hotness. I, that I think out of everything, that's the most I'm drawn to. Like, you can do like a dark Batman, and that's super dope, or like some skulls, which are dope. But when it's a female <laughs> and it's dark, I there I don't think any other art pulls me more than that. Like, yeah. like that right there, like. I, I would I yes that's the question I ask myself when I see her. would I yes <laughs> you know is that I hate snakes would I yes <laughs> you know it's like a weird kind of mental perversion but I can't unstop seeing it I have to look constantly so I think I'm okay though wet dreams keeps asking does how about the black light does it help is oh the lighting like, here no yeah yeah <laughs> No, this is just me not painting. When yeah, I'm painting. Problem. This place is lit up like a like a snow globe. Like it's pretty bright in here. So I turn. If I had my lights on, you you wouldn't even be able to see me. I'd just be white. <laughs> Mike says he wants to see you do a zombie tramp. You know, he's the king of zombie tramp, Mike. That would be interesting. A realistic zombie tramp. Holy shit! Could be done. You, is that something you would think about? <laughs> well, I mean, if I got to do it my way, yeah, I, I'd do it. Yeah. Well, I don't want to keep you, bro. Um, I I really appreciate you coming. Um, this is a special thing for me. So, and I hope it was special for all them. And I hope it was, you know, I know you don't do many interviews. I hope it was okay for you. It was good. It was good. It was fun. I like it. Good. We'll see you tomorrow then. We got we got our new host Jay. <laughs> Joel's out of here. <laughs> got our new co-host Jay. The Jays. We can have the Jays on one day. Just you two. We'll see how that goes. That'll be interesting. Uh, but besides that, again, I want to thank you so much. Um, check out Jay at Jay Ferguson Art on Instagram and on Facebook. And that's yep. it. I don't know what else to say. So I'm super sick. And I, I can promise you this. I promise that we I will get Jay to do a cover for me one day. No matter how much he tells me I have to pay it him. Will happen. Yeah. I'm gonna make it happen because I need it to happen. So thanks it again, bro. Happen. It will happen. It will happen. I'm excited and I'm gonna let him do whatever he wants to. That's what the way to get the best from him. So that being said, we're out of here. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching.